20 years, 20 long, long years since Fire Emblem first came to the West with the release of Fire Emblem 7 The Blazing Blade in 2003. On this very day, 20 years ago, is when Fire Emblem first came to us beyond, you know, Smash. And man, what a journey it has been, huh? Like, <laughs> thinking back to all the way back in the day when Fire Emblem was this weird little niche title that people really only knew because of Super Smash Brothers, and then a few people tracked down the source on the GBA to where we are now, with Fire Emblem being one of Nintendo's best-selling properties and something that has absolutely helped carry some of their proprietary hardware like the DS, the 3DS, and the Switch. It's, it's really insane, and as someone who is absolutely a Fire Emblem super fan, it is my number one favorite video game series of all time for a reason, I just wanted to take the time today to talk about Fire Emblem 7, what made it such a good game, let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and perhaps unsurprisingly, if you know me, you know my channel, you know I love strategy RPGs, I love Fire Emblem, I love Final Fantasy Tactics, everything in this genre, and I mean it's a huge day for Fire Emblem today, right? What a birthday it is, so if you enjoy my coverage of strategy RPGs, you enjoy my coverage of Fire Emblem, Tactics Ogre Reborn, all that type of good stuff, a like and a subscription would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much. So The Blazing Blade, the story of Eliwood, Hector, and Lynn, the very first game in the series to come to North America, what the second game that came out on the Game Boy Advance, and funnily enough, even though it was released over here to capitalize on the inclusion of Marth and Roy in Super Smash Bros. Melee, the game featured neither Marth nor Roy, and in fact, their games would not come to the Western market for years, if at all, seeing as how Binding Blade, Roy's game, has never been released in the West. But instead, the game focused on the precursors to Roy, Roy's father, Eliwood, as well as his companions, Lynn and Hector, who those of you who had played or have played the Binding Blade would recognize from their older forms in the preceding game, Fire Emblem 6. And amazingly, even though we had seen really very few games of this type in the West at that point, it was released on the Game Boy Advance, no one knew what Fire Emblem was except for truly die-hard, dedicated fans who'd been importing games, playing translated ROMs, all that type of good stuff. Game did well, man. It did not do poorly at all. And that led to future games in the series being released in the Western market, in English and various other languages. We had Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones shortly thereafter, which was my introduction to the series and is still probably my number one favorite game in the series, if for no other reason than nostalgia, but it's a very, very good game. We saw Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, the remake of Fire Emblem 1 in Shadow Dragon, then not the remake of Fire Emblem 3 because the remake of one didn't do well in the Western market, but then it was fine. Then it was fine. Everything was fine. Awakening came out on the 3DS, revitalized the series. We got Fates. We got Three Houses. We got Engage. And the series has just been popping off with re remakes and spin-offs and so much inclusion in Super Smash Brothers. It's just, it's wild to see what has stemmed from what for Nintendo was just kind of a Hail Mary, eh, Maybe we'll sell some of these games because some people see some of the characters in Smash and look at what it has become, right? And I don't want to discredit 7 itself either. Blazing Blade is an excellent example of a Fire Emblem game. For a lot of people, it is the gold standard of what a Fire Emblem game should be with the right mix of difficulty, character balancing, simple yet engaging storylines, fun characters, interesting designs, and people still go back to it to this day for challenge runs, story runs, different things like Hector Hard Mode or modded runs with extra added difficulty. It's used as a baseline for a lot of fan hacks out there. FD7 has an incredible legacy. And the fact that it's been 20 years since it released is, it's insane. It definitely is making me feel like that uh, gif of Snake becoming old instantaneously. 
<laughs> That's definitely what it feels like. And I didn't even play FE7 when it first released. Like I said, my intro to the series was FE8. I didn't learn about 7 until years and years later. I had Fire Emblem 8 as my only entry in the series for... I don't even know. Probably five, six years? I didn't pick up FE7 until I learned about it from beginning to watch Let's Plays on YouTube way back at the start of YouTube when, oh, what are the names? I think it was Seth1212 and Mage Knight, Mage Knight 404 and I think Omega Killer or something like that. They're collaborative Let's Play series of the various Fire Emblem games. They're the ones who introduced me to the fact that there were more games in this series. I thought Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones was the only one. I had no idea. I had no connection through anything because I thought it was a standalone title. And then I find out, oh my lord, at that point, I mean, by the time I realized that there was more to the series, FE7 obviously was out, but then I think 9 and 10, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, were also out at that point. And I was blown away. I pretty much immediately insisted that my family drive me up to the local GameStop. They actually had a copy of FE7 there for like 20 bucks, which is a steal nowadays. But listen, I got in before it was cool, all right? Y'all don't know how long I've been in this series. It was not popular back then. So I picked up Fire Emblem 7, burned through that. I played Lynn's story, Elliewood's story, Hector's story, Hector hard mode, Elliewood hard mode. All of it devoured it because at that point I had probably played the Sacred Stones four or five times easily, if not more. Honestly, it was my go to game when I wasn't feeling well, when I was homesick, which I was a lot. It was a game that I revisited over and over again to try different characters and different classes with different supports. There was so much to it to find out that there was all these other games, it just opened a world of possibilities to me. So I devoured FE7, I devoured Blazing Blade fell in love with all of the characters, this whole new world, this whole new story that was so similar yet so different from what I knew from the Sacred Stones. And it was harder, man. It was way harder. Like, as a kid, I absolutely abused the Tower of Valny and ground all of my characters up like crazy. And finding out that I couldn't do that in FE7 absolutely made me a better player because it forced me to think about what characters are actually good what investment I should give to who and for why and what characters I would bring to make sure that I had a wide array of different combat capabilities. Archers, mages, melee characters that did damage, crit based characters, tanks, all that type of stuff, healers. I really had to learn <laughs> compared to playing Sacred Stones and being like, well, every single character that I have a promotion item for is now promoted. They're like level five promoted. I'm still fighting level 10 mercenaries. <laughs> it was a dramatic difference, a very, very big difference. So I have FE7 in a lot of ways to thank for making me a better gamer and appreciating the core design philosophies of things like permadeath and difficulty and strategic decision making than I had when I first played Sacred Stones. And that's not to say that I was, you know, a complete boneheaded brute force nonsense fool when it came to playing Sacred Stones. I'd played FFT when I was a kid. I knew something about strategy, but it definitely wised me up a lot. So I have to give Blazing Blade a lot of credit for that. And even now, you know, there's a reason that we see so much representation for Blazing Blade. Things like Fire Emblem Heroes, a lot of the most popular characters, especially Lin and Hector, are from Blazing Blade. Things like them being represented in Engage at the expense of Elliewood being not there. It shows that for a lot of people, both in the East and the West, Blazing Blade still is that classic of the Fire Emblem series that we need to look to for inspiration when designing future games in the series, like officially from Intelligent Systems and Nintendo, or fan games, what have you. So it's just, it's an incredible entry in the series. If you haven't played it yet, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do. It's not that hard to find ways to play it. I won't talk about that here, but I mean, you know, my friends in the emu community, you know what I mean? Those big flightless birds that are very majestic and allow us to do all sorts of wonderful things. You know what I'm talking about. Just get out there and play it, man. Even if you've only played the newest games in the series, if you came on board with Three Houses or Engage or even Awakening, take the chance, man. Go check out Fire Emblem 7. Start with Lynn's story. It'll ease you into things. And it is an absolute joy. 
It's so simple. There's no base mechanics. There's no running around outside of battle doing this, that, or the other thing. It's just fight after fight after fight and learning about your characters and watching them grow and becoming an incredibly effective <laughs> mercenary army. It's a great time. Uh, so yeah, happy birthday to Blazing Blade, man. Like, I, I just, I saw it while I was scrolling through Twitter today. I d could not believe that it's been 20 years since it came out in the West. And we wouldn't be here in a lot of ways without it. I don't know if the series ever would have come to the West. I don't know if it ever would have flourished the way that it did outside of Japan without Blazing Blade. Maybe one of the other games would have come overseas and made the same splash that Blazing Blade did, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It's impossible to say. But it is very obvious that Blazing Blade left an impact on a lot of people. And I would say Fire Emblem is one of the more well-known game series out there now that isn't like, you know, the giant AAA mainstays as a result. And that's awesome. So thank you for listening, everybody. I just, I, as soon as I saw that news, I had to make a video about it because Fire Emblem is so important to me. It's so important to the channel. And, you know, maybe someday we'll see a really nice remake of FE7 so that those of you who don't play the GBA version can experience those characters and that story and that gameplay in its fully modernized glory. But uh, until then, thank you all so much for watching. I do very much appreciate it. My name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.